Okay, so today we're going to be building Conway's Game of Life. And so in this implementation, we're going to be able to seed our grid. We're going to be able to clear it. We're also going to be able to draw on it. And then obviously going to be able to play and pause it as well as change the speed to what we want. And so this implementation was inspired by both Ben Awad's and Code Academy's implementation. So I'll link theirs below if you want to see theirs. Um, but we're going to be using Vite and Tailwind today, which I think will give it a kind of nice polished look. And then we're also got the functionality I've just shown. Uh, so this is a great project. Uh, you know, we're using React, so we're going to have to manage our state very well and also use refs to handle the mutating of data. And then this project also has user interaction and it's also very visually appealing. So it's a great project to have on your portfolio. And so before we jump into the implementation, it's always good to know what the actual algorithm is. So if we go onto the Wikipedia page here, we can see that the universal game of life is an infinite two-dimensional orthogonal grid of square cells, each of which is in one of possible states, either live or dead. And every cell interacts with its eight neighbors, which are the cells that are horizontally, vertically, and diagonally adjacent at each step in the time, the following transitions occur. And so these four steps here are basically the algorithm we're going to have to implement. So it's any live cell with fewer than two live neighbor dies, as if by underpopulation, and any cell with two or three live neighbors lives uh, onto the next generation. Any cell with more than three uh, live neighbors dies, as if by overpopulation, and any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. So it's a super simple algorithm, but it's a good way to learn like mutating data and also learning some visual tricks within React. So let's jump into that now. Okay, so we're gonna create this Vite app. We're gonna use the command npm vite create vite latest and then give it the name Conway's Game of Life. And then we're going to be using a React and TypeScript template. So we're gonna open that up with code Conway's Game of Life. Okay, so now that we've got that open, let's open up our terminal here. And as I said, we're gonna be using Tailwind. So if we go over to the Tailwind docs and using it with V, we can then take this, so we're gonna say npm install Tailwind post, post CSS and auto prefixer, and then add them as dev dependencies. Okay, once that is done, then we wanna get the next. We wanna initialize our Tailwind config file with npm tailwind init dash p. Then what we wanna do is we wanna take the content from here. And so this will basically mean we are going to target the right part of our package. So we got the tailwind config file and then I update the content. So it's basically targeting the index.html file as well as anything, any JSX, TSX, JavaScript or TypeScript files within um, the source directory, which we have here. Then next we wanna jump into the index.css file, grab these here and drop them into our index.css file like so. So once we have those, what I wanna do is I first, I just wanna clean up all this CSS. We're not gonna be really using any of it. And then also my app.css file, I'm just gonna delete that. We won't be using any of that. And so what I like to do for a sanity check is go to our app.tsx file and then just delete everything and then just have a simple div in it and then give it a class name with h screen, which will give it a, a height of 100 view, uh, viewport heights and then width screen as well for the same. I give it a flex and then we're just gonna justify the content center, justify center, just give it some padding of four. And then also I'm just gonna add in a BG blue of 500 just to make sure it works. And then I'm getting this autocomplete here and this nice little popover because I'm using this Tailwind uh, VS Code extension. So you should uh, definitely use it if you're uh, coding along with this. Then I can nuke this state that I'm not using as well as all these imports gonna save our files here and then I'm gonna open up the terminal and then just run npm i to make sure we have all our dependencies installed. Ooh, I think I'm gonna have to use a different version of node. Let's see if that gets rid of the errors, perfect. And then what I'm gonna do here is run it with npm run dev. So I've jumped across here and we've got this blue screen here and if I type in test, there it is, perfect. Okay, so we've, we've got Tailwind hooked up perfectly. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is kind of create that grid outline, which is going to then obviously house the algorithm. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a bit of state. I'm gonna say const grid, set grid, use state. Okay, yeah, did its job for me. Use state, and so it's gonna be a number array. So if the cell is alive, it's going to have a one in it, otherwise it's going to have an, a zero in it. But instead of having an empty array, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our source folder. We're gonna create a new folder called utils. And then within that, we're gonna have a, a new file called utils.ts where we're gonna house a few utility functions as well as some constants. And so we're now gonna create that function. So we're gonna say export const create empty grid. And it'll take no parameters. And then what 
we want to do is we want to then return array dot from and then give it a length of 30 so this will be the number of rows and then for the calls we can say array and we can pass in 50 here for the calls and then we're going to fill it with zero and the reason why we're filling with zero is because they will all initially be dead but instead of having these kind of uh, numbers here 30 and 50 I'm going to just export them as constants so I'm going to say export const rows and again capital letters because it's a constant and then export if I could spell export const calls equals 50 and then we're just going to update these here to be rows and calls and so this is going to create a 2d array grid with all dead cells because they have a value of zero let's so then go back to my app.tsx and I'm going to say create empty grid empty and then import that get the brackets right okay and so now we're creating our empty grid then the next thing I want to do then is just ad adapt our container here so I'm going to make it a flex column and then I'm going to give it a gap of four so there's some nice spacing I'm going to give it a h1 just of Conway's game of life Conway's game of life as the title and then here we're going to say for the class name we're going to say above a medium screen so for kind of our tablets and desktops we're going to give it text of uh, 2xl and then ordinarily then we'll just it'll have a text uh, font size of uh, text extra large like so and then underneath this we'll render our grid so it'll have a grid container and so then what we're going to do is map over the grid so we're going to say grid.map so then we'll have our rows and then we'll also have our original row index and then for each row, then we'll also map over that. So we're going to say rows.map. And then we're going to get our column as well as having our original uh, column index. Original column index, like so. And now we can start returning our cell. So this is going to be clickable. So we're going to make it a, just a plain button element for now. Self closing because we won't have any text within it. And so then we're going to give it a key. And so that will be equal to. See if you can guess it. No, it's not guessing it. That's annoying. Okay, now it's got an original row index dash original call index. So we know that's going to be unique for each cell. And then for the class name, what we want to do is give it a border. So we're going to say border. And then we're also going to give it a border color of this kind of purplish color here, like so. So yeah, we've got a nice kind of purple border. Okay, so now that we have our base class set for the cell, what we want to do is we also want to change the background color depending on whether it's alive or not. And so to do this, we're going to use the help of a package called Tailwind Merge. And the reason for this is because it helps with merging multiple class names together when you're using Tailwind. So if I open up the terminal and then run npmi Tailwind Merge. Okay, so now that that's installed, I can then come across here, put curly braces around it and then say, Tailwind merge. Let's see if we can then import it. Tailwind merge. And then so afterwards, so again, we want to decide, okay, change its background color depending on whether it's alive or not. And so we'll know whether it's alive or not by getting access to the grid. And then we're going to say original row index and then original call index. And then again, we're going to change the color depending on whether it's alive, whether it's truthy, which in this case will be one. So it'll be this purple color, otherwise it'll be white. And so what I'm going to do is just update these colors so that they are nicer. And then the final thing we want to do to get our grid displaying is just to update the actual grid itself. So I'm going to come in here into the div, then I'm going to get a style property on it. And then I'm going to say display, it's going to use grid. And then for grid template columns, we're going to repeat. And in this case, it's not going to be length, it's going to be calls. And then beneath that, we also want to update our grid template rows to be repeat. And then instead of rows or calls, we're obviously going to use rows. Now, these values are currently static because we know what calls and rows are, but these are going to change because obviously we're going to make our grid dynamic such that if the screen size changes, so will the size of our grid so that it always looks good on all screen sizes. And so if you're astute, you may be asking, well, why aren't we using class names here? Why are we using the style property? And the reason for this is because Tailwind generates its CSS classes at build time. And this means that all the utility classes are predefined and cannot accommodate dynamic values. And so here, if we were to define this in class names, 
because this value in the future will be dynamic depending on the screen size, it wouldn't work because these values are calculated at runtime. So when the program is actually executing. And so that's why we have to define it using this style property here. And so obviously down here it's dynamic, but all the class names are defined at build time. So that's why we're able to do it here within the class name and using tailwind merge to then merge all the classes together. Okay, so let's save this. Kind of open up a dev server here. npm run dev. And let's see if it's working. Okay, nice. It's not pretty, but at least we've got the grid displaying. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to be able to actually run the algorithm. So what we're going to do is create a piece of state. So we're going to say const is playing. And so this will be used to determine if the algorithm is running or not. And again, it will be a Boolean. So we know if it's playing, uh, that this uh, state will be true. And then as well as the piece of state, we're also going to create a reference to this piece of state. So we're going to say const playing ref, and that equals react.use ref. We can get rid of the react and then just import use ref from react. And we're going to pass it is playing and then we're going to say playing ref dot current equals is playing and so the whole point of creating this is we want to use this use ref hook to maintain a consistent and current reference to the is playing state across component re-renders and so the reason why this is so important is because when we create the run the game of life function which has the algorithm the conway's game of life algorithm in it we always want to access the most recent state uh, during asynchronous operations like a set timeout because we're going to use a timeout to determine how frequently the algorithm will run. And so using the reference will prevent it from using outdated values captured at the time of the function's definition. And so this approach avoids errors and inconsistencies in state management when the play pause button status is toggled during game execution. So it might make much sense now, but as we go through the code, hopefully it'll make a bit more sense. So now that we have that state and reference set up, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our SR source folder and we're going to create a new folder called components. And then inside here, we're going to create a component, a new file called play pause button dot dot t tsx. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is export a function. So export function play pause button. And then it'll take two parameters. So the first one will be an on click event. So this will obviously be triggered when um, the button is clicked and then as well as is playing because we want to be able to determine is the algorithm running or not. So on click will simply be a function which returns void and is playing will obviously be a boolean like that. And then what we want to do is return a button element and then, then now we want to add our class name. So we're going to say class name and then here we're going to be using tailwind merge because based on the state of is playing we'll determine the states so we'll import that from tailwind merge and so the base class is here so first we're going to add transition and so what this does again this nice um, vs code extension here i can see exactly the the css properties it's giving us here and so it's giving us the transition property transition timing function as well as transition duration so that'll just make sure all the transitions are nice and smooth uh, and we're going to augment that by using ease in which again is just a transition timing function after that again i want to make it flex i'm going to center the items um, items center as well as justify center i'm going to give it a height and width of eight so 32 pixels width eight i'm then going to round the border i'm going to say rounded full so that it's a circle i'm going to give it a small shadow so shadow md and that's all our base classes but then for our dynamic classes i'm going to use is playing playing and then i'm going to use the built in um tailwind class here so we know if it's playing then the button it should be kind of maybe more of a gray color so i'm going to say bg gray gray 700 and then when we're hovering it i'm going to say bg i'm going to say hover bg uh gray 800 and obviously when we use the uh, hover prefix here obviously this is going to happen in the uh hover state and so that's when it's playing, but then when it's not playing, we know we want to show a green button to show, okay, now you can run the algorithm. So we're going to say BG green 500 and then hover BG green 700 like so. And so the nice thing about Tailwind is you get all of these uh, kind of uh, colors built in so you don't have to adjust your Tailwind config file at all. And then for our on click, we're just simply going to pass through the on click event. Okay, and then for the actual contents of the button, again, that'll be determined by the is playing. So if it is playing, what we want to show is a pause icon. So what we're going to do is open up a terminal here and we're going to say npm i react icons because this is where we're going to get our icons from. Close this. 
And so again, we want to show a pause icon. So BS fill pause, pause fill. And then we're going to give it a class name here. We're going to say, give it a height of six, so 24 pixels, and then a width of six as well. So it's the right size. Close that off. So let's see if we can import this. Yes, we can. And then similarly here, we want to get the play button. And so this will be BS fill, play fill. And again, same class name, since we can let the autocomplete do its job. And then update our imports there. Oops. Pull it that. Okay, and now we've got our play pause button. So let's go back to our app component. And then underneath the title, what we're going to do is we're going to add a div. And we're just going to give it a class name of flex, gap of four between our elements, and then items center. And then within here, we're going to now put our play pause button, like so. Stop closing, doesn't take any children. And then on click, what we are going to say is, again, it's a function that returns void. So the first thing we want to do is we want to check the status of is playing. So we're going to say set is playing to be the reverse of is playing, so bang is playing. We know that if it's not playing, we now want to run the algorithm. So here, the first thing we want to do, we want to say playing ref dot current equals true. And then we want to run our run our simulation here. And obviously we have to pass in the is playing as well. So we're going to say is playing equals is playing. Okay, and so the next thing we're going to do now is define our game of life function. So if we scroll up here, we can say const run game of life and then equals and so we're going to use a use callback here and so the reason we're using a use callback is uh, without this use callback the run game of life function will be recreated on every render of the component but by using the use callback the function is only recreated if obviously if one of its dependencies changes so we're going to say use callback and then pass in an empty dependency array for the moment and so the first thing we want to do is we want to check um if it is playing ref, so we're going to say playing ref dot current. So if that is false, sorry, then we can simply return because we don't need to do anything. And so this essentially will just pause the get pause the algorithm for us. Then otherwise, now we're going to update our grid. So we're going to say set grid, and then what we're going to do is get our current grid, and then we're going to pass through. And so the first thing we're going to do is create a new copy. So we're going to say const new grid equals current grid, and then within that we want to map over it. And then for each array within our grid, we then simply want to spread that into a new array, like so. And that's bad spelling by me. It should be current grid. Uh, and so what we're doing here is we're creating a deep copy of the current grid, ensuring that modifications to the new grid do not affect the original grid's data. And this is essential for immutable data handling in you know React state updates. So the next thing we want to do then is to loop over all the rows and columns. So we're going to say for let row equal zero, row is less than our constant rows, and then or pl row plus plus. Then we want to iterate through all the calls. So we're going to say for let call equal zero, call is less than the calls, and then call plus plus. Very simple. And then now we want to do is get our neighbors. So we're going to say let live neighbors initialize that as zero. And now what we want to do is we want to check in all directions. So we've got our directions here. So we haven't defined this constant. So if you go back over to our utils file, I'm going to paste in our directions here. And essentially what we're doing here is we're checking the eight neighbors around um, the current cell. And again, we're moving in a kind of a clockwise direction here. So we got right, down, right, down, down, left, left, up, left. And so again, we're just making sure we're checking all those uh, neighbor cells. So I'll save that, go back to our um, app.ts, see if we can update our imports. And then what for each direction, we want to say for each. And so within this, we know we've got our x and y. So I, I want to say direction, direction x, and our direction in the y. And we want to get access to the neighbor row and column. So we're going to say const neighbor, neighbor row equals the row plus the direction in the x, as well as the neighbor call is the column plus the direction in the y. And then what we want to do is we want to ensure that the neighbor is within the grid bound. So we're going to say if, and again, autocomplete's doing it here perfectly. And so if all these conditions are true, we then know, okay, the, the cell, the neighbor is within the grid bounds. And so then we can update our live neighbors. And all we're going to simply do is plus equals current grid. We're getting the neighbor row and the neighbor column. 
And if that's truthy, so if that evaluates to one, so it's live, well, then we're going to add one to the live neighbors. Otherwise, we'll just add zero, which essentially does nothing. And now that we have that, we can actually apply Conway's game of life rule. So we can say if live neighbors, so if it's less than two or live neighbors is greater than three, well, then we can set the new grid to be zero because these it's these conditions that cause the cell to die essentially and then we can say else if the current row call if it's if our current position is dead and we have exactly three live neighbors well in this case we grow and so therefore uh, it is now changed to being alive within the new grid and then the final thing we want to do is simply return new grid and so now that we've set our new our function here what we want to do is close that and here we want to set a timeout so we're going to say set timeout and so we're going to run this game of life function every 100 milliseconds and then within our dependency array we want to put in the playing ref as well as the set grid function okay and so now that we have this uh, callback function for our run game of life we can then move back down to our running our set our on click on the play pause button and then we can simply say run game of life and so if i jump over to our app we've got our play button here if i click it we get pause obviously it's not doing anything because we're not actually we're running the algorithm but we haven't populated any cells so that's fine but i also want to center this grid i think accidentally i said justify center but because we're using flex call it's the reverse so it should be item center that should center it yeah horizontally perfect and so I also, I want to add a quick seed button. So this will help us seed the cells so we can actually see is our algorithm working. And so I'm going to create, go over to our components folder, create a new button component, button.tsx. I'm going to say export function button. So it'll take two parameters. So it'll take an on click as well as uh, children. And so the on click the type of that will be uh, obviously a function. And so we've pretty much yeah, got it all completed here. I can tidy up these parentheses um, and yeah so again transition is in flex item center okay centering the items I want to change up these class names here to be a bit better so instead of a green button we probably want just like a gray button so BG gray 700 and hover background of a gray 800 fix this up here let's remove a fixed width and yeah that's pretty it's a really simple component here and so we can jump back here and so then underneath our play pause button we can add a button like so import that from our button component and then on the on click so we're going to go into our on click and so then within the on click it's going to be a function so here's where we want to seed so what we want to do is we want to say const rows initially initialize that as an empty array and we what we want to do is uh, iterate over all the rows we want to say for let i equals zero i is less than rows i plus plus and then once we're in that we want to say rows dot push so we want to push in each row um an array uh, of our columns so we say array dot from array length calls and then within each array what we want to do is we then want to update that and then fill it basically with a math.random function. And so this is going to essentially give us that variability. When we seed it each time, it'll be different. And so we're going to say here, if math.random is greater, because I'll return a, a value between 0 and 1, if it's greater than 0 0.75, well, then what we want to do is we want to say it's alive. So there's a 25% chance I'll be alive and a 75% chance that it'll be dead. So once we've done that, what we want to do is come down here and then we want to say set grid and set it to our columns here. And so to get rid of this error here, we just need to give it a children. And so in this case, we're just going to put in the word seed. So if I save that and we go across to our app, okay, the seed button needs work. But if I click seed, I, you can see here each time we're getting a different seeding of some cells that are dead and some cells that are alive. And so if I play now, we can see our algorithm is running perfectly. And then if I pause it, it stops play it again and it works and so what I want to add here is another button a, a clear button so if I come down here and say button clear button and then on click and I'll pass it a function here and what I want to do is I want to set the grid to an empty grid so create empty grid but then I also want to say set is playing is then false if I save that now our clear grid so if I clear this we should hopefully see an empty grid and we do perfect okay so let's quickly just fix up these buttons all i need to do is add some padding so if i say px4 
scroll across, perfect. We've got a seed and clear here and they work just fine. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add the ability because these cells are buttons to be able to click and kind of drag your cursor around and create, uh, and create live cells. So let's jump over to the code. So if I come in here, what we're gonna do is we wanna know if the mouse is down. So if someone's clicking on a cell, so we're gonna say const is mouse down and then set its mouse down and initially obviously that will be false. And so then if I scroll down here, I'm gonna add some functions. So we're gonna say const, we wanna handle a mouse down event. And all we're gonna do here is just set is mouse down to be true. So set is mouse down true. And then obviously for handle mouse up, we're just gonna do the reverse. So we're gonna say set is mouse down false. And then the next thing we wanna be able to handle is when a mouse enters above our cell. So we're gonna say const, handle mouse enter and so this would be a function it takes two parameters a row which would be a number and a column and then what we want to do is if the mouse is down so if mouse down or not mouse down if is mouse down so if the mouse is down if someone's pressing well then what we want to do is we want to toggle the cell state and so what we want to do now is define that function so we can say const toggle cell state and again, that will take two parameters. So we're going to say row to toggle, and that'll be a number as well as cell to toggle, which will also be a number. And so what we want to do here is create a new grid. So I'm going to say const new grid, and that equals grid dot map. And then we're going to use a row and a row index, get the index of that row. And then we want to say row dot map. So we want to map over each of the rows. So then we're getting each cell and its column index. And then after that, what we want to do is we want to have a little check here. So we want to say if the row index equals the row to toggle and the column index equals the column to toggle. So if this condition is true, so we've got a nested turner here. So we can see <clears throat> if we're looking at the cell to toggle, well then if that's true, we can then look at the cell and see, okay, if this cell is alive, if it's truthy. So if it's alive, we want it to be we want to change it to be dead, but if it's dead, we then want to change it to be alive. Whereas if we're not looking at the cell that's being toggled, well, we can just return the cell itself because we don't need to do anything. So it's a nested ternary, but once you get it, it's actually, it's really simple. And then all I want to do at the end is just simply set our new grid to be the new grid. And then I'm going to use this function and we're going to pass in toggles uh, cell state and pass in the row column. So now that the functions are defined, I'm going to go down to our button here. So this is each of our cells. So then I want to say on, on mouse down, we want to handle mouse down, on mouse up, handle mouse up, and then on mouse enter. What I want to do is pass that a function. And all we're, we're going to do here is handle mouse enter and then pass in the original row index and the original call index. I'm going to put an underscore here because that variable is currently being unused. So let's save this. That defined, if I go over to our app and I put my cursor down and draw, it works perfectly. And then if I run it, you can see there it's running the algorithm perfectly. So if I clear that, but you'll see there's one issue here is when I hold my cursor down, it works, but when I click on a cell, so I'm clicking right now, but it's not doing anything. And the reason for that is because we haven't defined an on click on the button itself. So if I go back over to our button components and then underneath here, I'm gonna say on click, then I'm gonna pass it a function. And this function is simply going to trigger the toggle cell state and it's gonna take the original index, row index and the original column index. So now if I come over here and I click on a cell, we can now see, I can now click on an individual cell as well as hold my cursor down and draw. And so now we have the ability to draw, which I think is kind of a nice because now we've, we're able to take user input, which just makes the app that bit much nicer. And so again, just one thing to note here is in this toggle cell state, it's really important to create a new grid as this ensures immutability, which, uh, and so by doing so, we're avoiding direct modifications to the grid state itself. And so this is crucial in React to trigger you know, proper re-rendering and maintain predictable state management. And so now that we've got this, I think the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a speed so that we can change the speed at which the algorithm is running. Okay, and so to add the speed, again, we're gonna create a new piece of state saying const speed set speed and we're going to initialize it to have a default value of 100 which equates to 100 milliseconds and then as well as that we're also going to create a speed reference so we're going to say similar to what we did for the is playing so we're going to say const speed ref equals use ref speed and then speed ref dot current equals speed so now we have that reference to the speed uh, piece of state and so what we want to do is go down to our handle run game of life function and then down here at the bottom of it 
instead of having our 100 here, we're gonna put in our speedref.current, okay? So now that we have that done, what we wanna do is we wanna go over to our components folder and create a new component, which will be used for our select dropdown, which will be used to select the speed. So it's a really simple component here. All it takes is a value, which will be used as the value of the select component. It'll take an onChange event, which is just passed into the onChange, children, um, as well as a label, which is used for the arrow label. We're not actually going to display the label. But one nice thing to note, most of the class names are the exact same to the button. But one thing that's important to note here is this group class name. And so this means whenever I hover over on the label, it will also change the background color uh, of the child component here because here we've got this group class so it means whenever we hover on one it'll change the background color of both so that means our label and our select will always be in sync with each other and so it's really nice if you haven't used it before go to the tailwind docs and read up on group it's uh it can come in handy in some instances so now we'll go back over to the app we'll scroll down and so underneath our seed button we're going to put in our select here we're going to import that and so if we fill in our props here, so we're going to say, give it a label, I know, speed selector. The value we're going to use is, well, that will be the speed piece of state, so speed. And then the on change events. So that will take a, an event. And then what we want to do is we want to set our speed. So we're going to say set speed. Make sure that is an integer, and then we're going to say parse int e dot target dot value, which would be the value we have passed here, which would be the speed. And so then within it, we're going to pass our options here. So just a regular option tag, and then we're going to give each give it a value. The first one will be one thousand, so this will be slow. And then to save time, we duplicate those. We'll have medium, fast, and lightning. And so. Uh, 1000, so that'll be one second for slow. We'll do 500 for medium. We'll do 100 for fast and then 50 for lightning. So if I save that and go across to our app, if I seed it and I run it, okay, it's now going fast. Well, if I change it to slow, now it's changing every second. Then if I change it to medium, it should move faster. And then if I go to lightning, it should be really fast. And yeah. So now we've got a speed toggle, which is really nice. And so the last thing I want to add is the ability to change the size of the grid based on the screen size. So if I open up my dev tools here and make it responsive, you can see here the app is kind of just dying. You know, it's not the grid isn't responding. It's kind of just cropping. And so what I want to do is I want to update it so that it manually changes based on the screen size. OK, so if I jump back over to the app, if I go up to the top, we're going to define a new piece of state. So we're going to say const cell size and then set cell size. And so what we want to do is define a function. So we're going to say const get grid size. And so that's going to be a function. It doesn't take any parameters. And we're going to say const size. So we want to get the minimum. So we're going to say math.min. So the first one we'll be looking at is the inner width. So we're going to say window.inner width. And again, I want some kind of padding almost on either side. I don't want it to be pressed up right against the end. So I'm going to say minus 32. So that'll give us roughly, because we've centered it, 16 pixels either side, which should work. And then divide that by the number of columns that we have. And then we'll get the minimum of that. Or I want to get window.inner height minus 200 pixels. So that's roughly the size of our header and buttons. And so that will make sure it's there's always enough room for the grid. And then finally, I want it to have a kind of a certain size that it never goes greater than. And so in this case, I'm going to use 15. Uh, so for 15 pixels, and then all we want to do is just simply return size here. And then within our use state, so the initial state of the initial value for our cell state will be get grid size like so. And then once we've done that, what I want to do is I want to add in a use effect. So I'm going to say use effect. And so basically what will happen here is what we want to do is we want to add an event listener uh, onto the DOM. So we're going to, again, initialize this on the first render by having empty parentheses. And so then we're going to say const handle resize. So every time the screen size changes, we want this function to trigger. And all it will do is set our grill size to the get grid size. And to do this, we're going to say window.add event listener. And so it's going to be a resize and we pass in the handle resize. But we also want to clean this function up. We don't want it to linger around. So then we're going to add in a return statement and simply say window.remove event listener resize and then pass in that same function. I think we need to update our imports from React. And so we're not using our cell size here. So if I go down here to our grid, 
remember here, down here, I said this would be a dynamic value and now is, we can now put in cell size and then similarly here, cell size. And so again, this is why we're using uh, this style property and not the class name, because these are only known at runtime and not build time and therefore Tailwind will not be able to uh, know it in advance and so wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't work properly. So we save this, we now go over to our component. We can now see it is resizing based on the size of the screen. And so it's got that max size there of 15 pixels. And if I scroll up, it also works in the vertical direction as well. And so the last thing I wanna do now is add in, uh, is improve that background color. And so I'm added this here and then I added relative. And so this, um, I can remove the BG Blue 500. I borrowed, there is a designer's portfolio who had some really nice background colors. And so I took that from there. And so I'll leave the link below on that. It's a, it's a really nice color. And so if I move across here, we've now kind of got this space kind of purple vibe going on here. So if I can get rid of the screen size, we can now draw on it. We can see it, we can play it, we can change the speed. And so it's fully done. So we've now completed Conway's Game of Life. So if you enjoyed that, like and subscribe. And also if you've got any more ideas, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get around to doing it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.